Monday. Uh, hope you're all well and all your family are well and are all following the correct protocols and, and keep each other safe. Okay, so this is uh, class one of the atom, uh, titled Models of the Atom. Okay, so back in the days of Greeks, thousands of years ago, there was a guy called Democrates, and he came up with the idea that you couldn't just keep subdividing things. Okay, so if you had a lump of a lump of coal, you kept having and having and having and having and having it, you couldn't do that forever and ever. So you had to come to a situation where something couldn't be divided. So there was a final particle of let's say coal that couldn't be subdivided so there you go that was our first idea the atom now democrates was what we call a natural philosopher so he didn't have to bother with any of these experiments or any nonsense like that he just thought about it just felt it was a good idea and explained it and everybody listened the good old days right so democrates also came up with the idea that there was four elements effectively the idea of elements there was four elements and everything was made up of, of one of the four and he used what are called the platonic solids uh, those of you doing dcg will be probably well aware okay to represent them so this was fire okay so a uh, tetrahedron okay this was earth now where's the gun cube okay it was earth this was uh, air right which is effectively two square based pyramids uh, attached together okay and this the beautiful icosahedron was water and his idea was that everything was made up of these four things. Okay, so everything was made up of these four. So effectively, what I have in my hand here was a periodic table in Greece in Grecian times. Okay, now the great thing for Democrates was everybody believed him for four and a half thousand years, uh, and then they started doing experiments. Okay, we have a problem. Okay, so we move zoom forward quickly to eighteen hundred, and in eighteen hundred. We have a guy called John Dalton, who was doing chemistry, you've probably come across him, John Dalton, who came up with the idea, or kind of articulated the idea, that everything is made of atoms, there are different types of atom, and atoms are effectively, can't be divided, they're just like little balls like that, okay, little spheres, okay, that's what an atom is, okay, and that was a Dalton model, so atoms are little particles, little balls, and they are neutrally charged, they have no, no charge, okay, so that's, uh, that was the Dalton method. All went well, until the later years of the 19th century, about 1897, when there was a guy called J.J. Thompson discovered the electron. Okay, When he discovered the electron, there was a problem because he found that the electron was 2,000 times smaller than the atoms that were supposed to be not subdividable. So we had to improve the model, as we've said before. Okay, So if we have Dalton's model, we have experimental evidence to indicate it or something else, so we improve the model. So the improved model is what was known as uh, Thompson's plum pudding model. Okay, So let's have a look. So this is the Dalton model. Okay, so that's a neutral ball. Okay, the Thompson's model was okay. The atom was still neutral. Okay, so what he said was that this was positively charged. Okay, the whole lot of it, but embedded in it there were electrons, which had a negative charge, and therefore the overall charge was neutral. Okay, and this became known as Thompson's plum pudding model because effectively it was like a pudding with the plum, the plums uh, embedded in it. Okay, so the Americans called it the raisin cake model because they didn't know what a plum pudding was. Okay, so it's the raisin cake model, the plum pudding model, that was the idea. It lasted. The model wasn't a great model. Uh, I think Thompson knew that at the time. It lasted about, about uh, 10 years. Okay, so Dalton model, Thompson model, and then we had the iconic Rutherford's gold foil experiment, which was an experiment done by a guy called Ernest Rutherford, New Zealand physicist, to see what the atom really made up of, was made up of. So let's have a look at what, what he did. Okay. So what Rutherford did was he took a source of alpha particles. Now alpha particles are positively charged particles, very small, positively charged particles, like positive bullets, okay? And he fired these at a very thin leaf of gold foil, hence the gold foil experiment. Now the gold foil was about 100, about 100 atoms thick, okay? In a video we're going to look at later, uh, our friend, our new friend Jim said, uh, mentioned a couple of atoms thick, a little bit of a sub-exaggeration. Okay, so the alpha particle fired at the gold foil. Okay, and you would expect that the, all the alpha particles go straight through the gold foil. Okay, now, so what he did was, uh, what he got his students to do, was to detect the alpha particles. And alpha particles, as we'll see later on, a lot, 
can be detected on a thing called a zinc sulfide screen and effectively what happens are flashes of light okay so if an alpha particle is a zinc sulfide screen you get flashes of light flashes of light okay also known as scintillations okay so flashes of light okay so what they did was the two the two students geiger and Marison, okay geiger of the geiger controllator okay did this experiment and what they found was that most particles or most alpha particles went straight through the gold foil as you'd expect some were deflected a small little bit which was uh, a bit surprising but no big deal okay so they had zinc, they moved the zinc sulfide screen here and here and very occasionally a part uh, they had a detection but very bizarrely and this was the big one okay it was that some of the particles seemed to be rebounded so in other alpha particles hit the gold foil and some of them were rebounded and when they put the zinc sulfide back here they got detections now this was this was there. So Geiger and Marsden did all of this, handed the information to their, their professor, Rutherford, and Rutherford came up with what is now known as the Rutherford model. Okay. So let's have a look. Now, I forgot to say everything done in a vacuum because the alpha particles can't get through, it would, would be blocked by air otherwise. Okay, so the Rutherford model. Okay, so what he had basically what he said was happening was these are your atoms. Okay, and what was, we were finding happening was most were going straight through. Some were being deflected a small little bit, and then we had the bizarre ones that were coming straight back. Okay. So what Rutherford said was that atoms were mostly empty space. Atoms were mostly empty space, and that there was a dense positive core in the nucleus. Okay, called the nucleus in the centre, called the nucleus. Okay. No, we know this because we, we've. In chemistry last year, you did the Bohr model, okay, which is the next model on, and you had no idea that he's talking about the nucleus here, okay, a positively charged nucleus, okay, right. So how did he explain the the results? Okay, so basically, most of the particles went straight through because the alpha particles came nowhere near the nucleus. Remember, the nucleus is positively charged, the alpha particles are positively charged, and you know that plus charges repel. Okay, so if some particles came quite close. A bit closer than what I was showing there, came quite close to the nucleus, they would be repelled, okay, and they'd swerve away. So they were the slightly deflected ones. And very, very occasionally, kind of one in about 10,000 times, you get the scenario where the alpha particle has a head on collision. No, it doesn't collide. Plus charged alpha particle comes very close to a plus charged uh, nucleus and is repelled backwards, okay, and that was the, that was the big one, okay. So Rutherford's model, let's have a look again, effectively, Rutherford's model, quite simply, okay, dense positive core, uh, called the nucleus, at a mostly empty space, and then these electrons are kind of zooming around randomly, okay, zooming around randomly, okay, no, um, no uh, pattern that you know will come next with the Bohr model, okay, because you've already done chemistry, okay. Right, okay, so that's that's the Bohr model. Right, so we've gone from the Dalton's model, oh, sorry, from Democritus, who will forget about the Dalton's model, uh, just atoms are just particles, okay, to Rothwell's model, where you have the positively charged solid with electrons dotted in it, and now the Rothwell model, dense positive core, uh, mostly empty space, and electrons swirling around in some way. Now, that model didn't explain a lot of bits and pieces so we had to move forward to the um, uh, the next model which is the Bohr model okay now the Bohr model basically says as you, uh, and, and you're aware of this from from junior cert okay is that you have your nucleus positively charged nucleus but the electrons are in shells they're different shells okay now effectively these shells are what we call energy levels in that the first two electrons as you know form first shell they're at the lowest energy the next electrons are the next level of energy and so on. So effectively, we're going to call these energy levels rather than shells from now on. Okay. And look at what happened. Okay. So we have this situation. Okay. So this is the lowest energy level. We call it E1. Let's move it up here. This is the next energy level. We call it E2. Okay. So what happens is electrons, okay, happily go to the lowest energy level. The same as if you're filling a bookshelf, the lowest energy is the lowest, you, you fill the books from the bottom up. Okay, so here we have this energy, this electron. Okay, so we, if we apply energy to the electron, in other words, heat it, okay, or anything like that, okay, so like, like putting a poker into a fire, okay, the electron 
raises to a higher level. Okay, now it's at the higher level. It's, it is officially excited. Okay, it's in its excited state. And when it's in an excited state, it is going to fall back to the original level eventually. Okay, it has extra energy because it's been raised to this level. It eventually falls back. When it falls back, it emits light. Okay, it emits light. And this is the important thing. It emits light and it emits a certain color, certain frequency wavelength of color of light, depending on the difference in the energy levels. Okay. Now, tomorrow we'll talk about the photoelectric effect and we'll talk about that light can actually be, um, light can be explained as traveling in little particles called photons. Okay, so what we're going to say here, getting ahead of tomorrow, is we're going to say that the electron is given energy, let's say heat energy, raised to, an, to a higher level. It then falls back to the lower level emitting light and it emits a photon of light. Okay, a photon of light is emitted. And we have a formula as we'll see tomorrow the energy of that photon is HF. Okay, we'll worry about what HF are tomorrow. Uh, F frequency. Okay, it's so a frequency of light. So basically, the bigger the energy level, okay, the bigger the frequency, uh, the bigger energy change, the bigger the frequency. Okay, so we have a formula that we'll be looking at tomorrow that the energy lost as it fell, HF is equal to the difference in the two energies, E2 minus E1. Okay, and that's an important, an important uh, equation as well. Okay, so just to recap, and this is where we're at today, okay, just to recap, we've looked at effectively four models. Okay, so let's look at our four models. Okay, so model one, Dalton's model, atoms are neutral, just spheres. Model two, Rutherford's, uh, sorry, Thompson's plum pudding model, positively charged object, okay, with little electrons on embedded, plum pudding. Okay, that's the plum pudding. Third model, Rutherford's model, Coming from his gold foil experiment, gold foil experiment, very important. Rutherford's gold foil experiment uh, gives us the positive charge nucleus, mostly empty space, okay, but electrons kind of zooming around in, uh, in kind of an arbitrary way, okay. And two years after that, okay, working together with Rutherford, we have the Bohr model. In the Bohr model, we have a positive core, okay, as we know, and we have electrons in shells. Again, remember from junior search, you can put two into the first shell, eight into the second shell, and so on. But what we're learning now today is that the shell, is, it, the better way of calling that is an energy level. So the two electrons in the inside are at the lowest energy, and the electrons go out uh, at the next level are at higher energy. And if an electron jumps from here to here, if it could, okay, when it falls back down, it emits light, and it's a certain color of light. Okay, that's what, that's what happens. Right? Okay, so that's it. Lesson one done. Okay, follow the instructions that, that have accompanied this video. And we'll talk to you tomorrow when we move on to lesson two. Okay, bye-bye.